Today's question is, Anthony, should I do more isolation exercises and incorporate them into my workouts? Now, if you've been following us at all, I think you know how we feel about isolation exercises, but let's just kind of talk through it a little bit. I mean, one, let's think about what are your actual goals? If you're someone who maybe just wants to get bigger muscles, who has a lot of time to put into the gym every single week, then, you know, isolation exercises can be beneficial. You see a lot of people who are bodybuilders or figure type competitors, they do a lot of things because they want to isolate certain muscles because they have an aesthetic they want to go for. Um, and they usually have a lot of time to spend doing those exercises. But the common person, the usual the people that we work with and that I see out in the world, isolation exercises are, are not a good idea and really for a couple of reasons. One is we want to make sure we train the whole body and we want to train the muscle mind connection where you can reflexively do things. You can move with strength and balance and power without having to think about it too much. When we do isolation exercises, we're kind of decoupling our certain muscles from other muscles. We want everything to work in synchronization, to be the same, one whole body moving fluidly and you know just very cleanly and nicely. So that's why we recommend full body exercises, things that force you to think and force you to incorporate everything together. Because your body is a moving part. It's like a machine, lots of moving parts, but they all work together. When one stops working, it affects it affects the whole. Okay. Another reason is really just time-wise. All right. Most people don't have multiple hours a week to spend working out, or maybe they don't want to spend that much time. And so, how can you get the most bang for your buck? And that's when we do compound movements, where we incorporate multiple joints at the same time. You know, things like squats. We incorporate your knees, ankles, hips, and even depending on how you, you know, if you want to even add more, you can do like a kettlebell front-loaded squat, or even like a sandbag front loaded. So now you're incorporating everything from your neck down in one movement. Same thing with different kinds of rows, deadlifts, cleans. I mean, a lot of movements that, that you can do, you can incorporate and make them total body, multi-joint exercises. That's gonna help you get done quicker. It's also gonna help tie your whole body to move together. Because then in real life, you'll be able to move more fluidly, you'll be safer, you know, it should help you even prevent some maybe aches and pains that come up with bad movement, back pain, knee pain, that sort of thing. So the better you can incorporate multi-joint movements well into your program, the better you're going to feel and the less time you're going to spend in the gym if you don't want to spend time in the gym. Think about that. Total body movements. Get rid of, you know, bicep curls, do some rows instead. You know, instead of doing leg extensions, do some squats or lunges instead. Things like that incorporate the total body and you'll, you'll thank me for it, okay? So try some of those out and until then, move better, train smarter. See you next time.